let's say you're working for a multinational bank that is using IBM mainframe to host its core banking applications and they're using CA7 workload scheduler to schedule, run and monitor daily bad jobs which is used to process millions, in fact billions of transactions that happens throughout the day. So being an operator you should know how to use CA7 fstruct command. This command is generally used to display the structure of each schedule. Ladies and gentlemen, once again, welcome back to our channel. And the topic for today's session is CA7 FSTRUCK command. So without wasting any time, let's focus on today's agenda. We start today's session with the introduction to CA7 workload scheduler. Then we will focus on FSTRUCK command definition and syntax detail. And finally, I will end this session with abstract command examples. So ladies and gentlemen, before I start with today's presentation, I would request you all to do subscribe to our channel because we need your support to grow our channel. And in case if you have already subscribed to our channel, then I would like to say a big thank you for your subscription. So ladies and gentlemen, let's get started with introduction. CA7 is a job scheduling software. It is mostly used by large enterprises that use IBM mainframe as a computing platform. CA7 is generally used to schedule, monitor and run daily bad job as per predefined plan. Now let's focus on the definition of CA7 FSTRUCK command. So FSTRUCK command is generally used a report displaying an entire job flow structure. You can use abstract command to display the structure of each schedule. Now let's focus on the format of the abstract command. So this command is pretty simple and straightforward. You need to type the keyword abstract followed by a couple of different parameter as per your requirement. And once you write this command on CA7 screen, you only need to hit enter. And as soon as you hit enter, it will generate the detail job flow structure so that you can easily understand what is the predecessor, what is the successor and at what time this job is going to trigger. Now let's look at a couple of examples so that you can understand what all information is displayed on CA7 screen when you fire this command. So in this example we have three jobs that is job A, job B and job D with two different schedule. In first schedule job A triggers job B and in second schedule job A triggers job D and to display the structure of first schedule you need to use abstract command followed by a job name and schedule ID and when you enter this command and hit enter the following details will be displayed on the screen so this screen basically display general information about job A including the name of the last job it triggered when it run under the schedule ID 1 when you scroll this screen forward, then system will display additional information related to job A. So if you look at the left hand side of the screen, you'll notice job A is listed on top because this is the job that will trigger job B. And similarly, job B is a successor of job A and it is highlighted with green color and all the jobs which is triggered by job A will be intended under it. And in this case, we only have job B, which is triggered by job A. So it is listed under job A. And if you look at the column, which is highlighted with blue color, that is triggering. And if you see the second row, it shows job A is actually triggering job B. Now let's look at one more example where we are using abstract command with from parameter, which is generally used to specify the date and time for the time interval to be forecasted. So in this example, I've used abstract command followed by a from and in from parameter, I've specified the date that is 0518 and by default, the format is MMDDYY and when you hit enter, it will list all the jobs that is scheduled to run. So again, if you look at the left hand side, you have the job that triggers all these jobs and subsequently all the successor jobs are listed under that particular job. 
and if you look at the triggering column so the first row is empty or blank because this is the first job so it doesn't have any predecessor similarly if you look at the second row you have a job name mentioned over there which is your first job which is actually a job that is triggering so this column actually provide information related to predecessors of a job so ladies and gentlemen this marks an end to our today's CA7 command reference tutorial and I would request you all to do subscribe to our channel because we need your support to grow our channel and in case if you have any questions or feedback then please do mention in the comment section I'll going to respond back after this presentation once again thank you so much